Hello, greetings and salutations. Welcome to Buffalo Fireside Chats. I hope you guys are doing great. I'm doing great as an ILA shareholder. The ILA's Discord, we submitted a bunch of questions to JP Backwell, and like usual, he got back to us really quickly. And I gotta say, I'm completely impressed with the responses that he, he gave. I'm gonna put the link to this document down in the description below. I'm not gonna read it word for word. That's your job. But please check out this document, and I'm gonna cover some of the points that I think are very, very important. Let's get right into this thing. All right, guys, so here we are. Uh, there were nine questions total. So here's question number one. It had to do with the completion of the audit um, and basically the timeline for that. So let's see what he had to say. All right, here it is. <laughs> uh, the 2020 audit is completed, which was the most difficult period to have audited since this is the period when the company was not under our management. The 2021 audit is expected to be completed by the end of this month, after which we will submit our Form 10 to go through the process of becoming fully reporting. He goes on. The delays led us to review, because it, it was delayed. They expected it done a little bit sooner, but they're still ahead of schedule, all right? So originally, the timeline was for January tw uh, 2023, and they're already ahead of schedule. But these guys, are they, they are pressing on. Um, but he says, the delays led us to review and then appoint a new PCAOB, certified accounting firm, to complete the audit. The company appointed was Papara and Company, LLP. I think that's how you say that. Well, whatever. Either way, uh, he goes on. The figures filed in our quarter two disclosure were reviewed by our auditors and approved. All right, so audit, uh, sorry, um, audits take place on an annual and not quarterly basis. All right, therefore, it is unreasonable to expect the quarter two financials to be fully audited. However, we took the step of having our auditor review the financials and approve them to confirm their legitimacy. So that means the, the financials that we just got were audited. And so that is very, very important, especially when we're talking about 19.7 million in revenue. Okay, let's keep moving on here. All right, next question. And, and look, there's a lot of, I'm, I'm going past that is very, very important. So go and read this, all right? Click that link in the description. Also subscribe and like, oh, that would be great. <laughs> all right, the next one is about the European deal. The, the, uh, the European deal, European. All right, listen. It was supposed to be done by the end of 2021. That was phase one. And it was supposed to, uh, the phase two was supposed to be done in early 2022. Obviously, that has not happened. Um, he explains that here. All right. All right. Phase one of the EU deal has been delayed because we have recently opted to purchase a larger property outright. All right. He goes on. The larger phase one site provides us with facilities for the range, the full range of E-Raptor commercial electric utility vehicle manufacturing, a large separate entrance facility for the Replace Solutions urban mining subsidiary, a very suitable firefighting vehicle and equipment manufacturing facility, and additional space for other manufacturing initiatives, including wild firefighting vehicles and equipment, drone manufacturing, and more. That is going to be one huge site. All right. We know that owning a large facility outright and obtaining higher government initiatives, larger deal value, is more beneficial to the long-term value of our business. We took the decision to go through the lengthier process, which I realize has frustrated many, although we know that this lengthier process means that we are adding substantially more value to the business in terms of our balance sheet, manufacturing capability, manufacturing contracts, and, of course, revenue. All right? Listen. It, it, I'm not looking at the day to day. That's why, like, it really doesn't bug me that we're down here because I'm trying to get as many shares as possible. But they are looking; they're they're building a business. They're not; they're not. And he, you'll see this down below that they they don't care day to day. They're building a multi billion dollar conglomerate, and I can't wait till I could say I told you so. <laughs> um, here. This is about phase two. We have chosen to delay our occupation of the phase two facility for regional political reasons and due to the occupation of a larger phase one site, which offers us more capability than originally planned. Um, yes, for those of you that don't know, there is a war going on there in that region. So that is going to affect business. All right. But they're still proceeding forth. But you know what? You're going to have delays when you have things in the world that go on like that. So uh, I'm going to keep going here. This does not mean that we won't proceed with the phase two site. And we are exploring various options for the huge site with the Serbian government. Unfortunately, we cannot share more about the phase two at this at this stage, except that broadly, we are achieving what we need to as a business in the region. And they go on, uh, and we have several more extraordinary opportunities 
in, uh, opportunities in the region as a result of our efforts. So, and I think that's really going to be the case for these guys. Um, once they get a footprint in an area, I think that they're going to build upon that. And I think uh, that's going to happen with Georgia Fire especially. And they talk a little bit about that down below as well. So I'm not worried at all. Uh, so this one was about, and there was all a big hoopla about this stuff, um, about the PPP acquisition, Vera Drones, and Curve. And so basically this asks about where they are at with these acquisitions. So let's get this out of the way. PPP acquisition. All right, it failed. It's done. It's out. Don't worry about it anymore. Suffice to say that we found information which meant that we would not pay the original agreed price for the business. Do you want them to acquire a business that's going to be real shitty and a burden on their books? Absolutely not. So I'm not worried about it. Don't waste your time on it because these guys have a lot in the pipeline. It's not like an OTC company that you were waiting for that one merger or that that one acquisition and it falls through because these guys have everything lined up. So if they don't get one, they, they already have three or four, you know, in their minds that they're thinking about, well, if that doesn't work out, we're probably going to go with this. These guys are acquiring machines, all right? So let's talk uh, at point number two, the acquisition being made by uh, Quality Industrial Corporation, $100 million plus revenues, all right, provides all the capability which PPP would have provided and significantly more. So like I said, you know, it didn't work out at PPP, but guess what? It doesn't matter. They they made up for it. Okay, now, they, they talk about VR drones here. Uh, we are in the process of restructuring the deal with VR drones, and we cannot discuss it further until it is agreed. Overall, what is being worked in is positive for both Eyeless and Vera Drones. So I think that that gives me a positive vibe right there. Curve XR is very much part of our business, and we have been actively selling its technology in the Gulf region. Curve XR is also responsible for the defense and firefighter software development for the Eyeless suit. The haptic suit, which they announced, which I think is going to be like the Tesla suit that they're going to have designed for their specifications, but we will see. This business is structured within our ERT subsidiary, and therefore we did not have the documentation completed during quarter two for it to be included in the filing. But like they just said, they are fully operational with Curve XR. All right, let's go to number four. So they were talking about the large UK deal and the large Asian company. All right, so basically... These are, there's a kibosh to this. They aren't doing it. Um, we decided as a board last week not to proceed with the UK acquisition, yada, yada, yada. But uh, they have a much larger potential acquisition in the US, which will provide us with the necessary CNC and plastic welding capability that we require. And da, 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 $150 million in annual revenue. Bam! Just like that. That's all there is to it. That's that's all there is to it. A winner. Just like that. And this is absolutely huge. I mean, psh, goodbye OTC. Now the Asian deal, he goes on, it failed due diligence. Do you want them picking up shit acquisitions? Absolutely not. However, like I said, they always have something ready. LOI with another Asian company for our renewable sub subsidiary. We believe this business has greater potential given the other acquisitions we are making and the direction we are taking with our subsidiaries. As mentioned above, we are working on several acquisitions, including some very large U.S. acquisitions. All right. Question number five. All right. It has to do with the share structure and uh, Nick Link shares, but I'm not going to get into all that. I've heard enough of it for like the last month, and all I need to know is that there is absolutely no intention of going anywhere near the $2 billion authorized shares. If anything, we are trying to reduce and not increase the outstanding share count. So they've said that from the beginning. They've held true to the word. Yes, do they have to add shares for acquisitions at times? Absolutely. But they're not doing things like other OTC companies are doing, which is adding a block. They're adding specified amounts. So, you know, with their outstanding share count of like 1.2 something um, a billion, you know, you have other OTC companies, really bad companies that will just add, boom, another billion on just in case, you know, so they're not doing that. So that's one thing that you need to know that they're adding specified amounts for what they need to acquire. And they're not just adding a block of off, uh, outstanding shares. So they're not going full on dilution. All right. So here we go. 
We, as the core management team of the company in Insiders, um, have a 10 to 20 year view of building Eyeless into a global brand such as GE, United Technologies, or even the likes of Berkshire Hathaway. This is a destination business for us and selling shares in the short term or even medium term makes absolutely no sense in light of our strategy. All right. And I like this next line coming up. This is what this is what I like. When one considers this, our plan and its corresponding rewards, one will understand that selling shares for even one dollar pales in comparison to the return on our investment, given what we are building. And it's at six cents right now. All right. So question six was very similar to question five, and he pretty much answered that. Um, like I said, I'm putting it in the link below. Read it. Uh, seven has to do with the 53 million shares to Brett Rosen. Um, I've heard enough of that. So um, he, they've been very, very clear about that. Brett Rosen has cleared things. And uh, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing what happens when you combat people with actual um, facts. <laughs> uh, number eight, is there any update that can be provided on uh, the share lockup? And if so, what type of incentives will Eyeless offer to lock up shares? Now, I absolutely love the answer here. And I know we've been talking about the share lockup. So here, the share lockup is still very much on the table and being worked on behind the scenes. We do our best to act in the best interest of our shareholders. And therefore, we believe the share lockup should take place at a time where it will create optimal value for shareholders. Given what we know is developing, we believe that we have not reached the correct moment for the share lockup. All right. While reducing the outstanding share is... I'm sorry, while reducing the uh, outs outstanding share count is a high priority and always on our minds, rushing a share lockup as a result of shareholder pressure, even though it is actually not in the best interest of the shareholders at this time, is not the way we will ever do business. So patience is what he's trying to say there. You know, all right, let's, let's keep going uh, on here. As we are reaching and achieving critical milestones, such as our audit completion, Form 10 submission, name change, ticker change, first potential spin out, etc., we believe that these milestones will add exponentially more shareholder value and make a share lockup more attractive to current and new shareholders. At that point, we feel that the share lockup will have a larger uptake and we will be in a better position to communicate greater incentives. And that's what I want. I want them to give me the best possible incentive to lock up my shares as possible. And if it takes an extra month, two months for them to do that, three months, four months, whatever, do whatever you got to do, because I will lock up shares if they give me a good offer. So on to question number nine. On the marketing side, there has been progress made across the board on Synergy regarding the appearance of the various websites under the Eyeless banner. Georgia Fire and Supply has not been updated yet from its outdated appearance. Is there any update as to if and when this website will be updated in a similar style? And he goes to answer this. We are building a completely new website for Georgia Fire Rescue and Supply. Um, and on down here, a new website like this... Uh, along with all of its SEO requirements and much more takes time to complete. The website, which the company now has, it has is well known by their customers and does not warrant changing until the new website can be fully functional. An interim website is also not necessary as the company is performing incredibly well and we are working on other priorities in the business such as, but not limited to, increasing its stock holding capability, ongoing net suite integration, a stronger presence in Southern Georgia, expansion into neighboring states and the selling of firebug skid units for rapid response vehicles and i completely agree there there's no sense on, sense on doing an interim website when that website is working and uh when it's time for the new website they're gonna they're gonna launch it and i'm sure it's gonna be spectacular Woo! that was a lot of information but guess what click the link below and read the whole thing all right because there is a lot there I want to thank JP Backwell for taking the time to respond to our questions from the iList Discord. It really does mean a lot to us. So thank you so much, Mr. Backwell. Listen, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you to all my subscribers. I want to get that subscriber count up to 300 so that way I can make another donation to charity. Almost there, guys. Remember, there is more that binds us than breaks us. Peace.